Hello, and welcome to this chapter in our ongoing series of tutorials that will help you get familiar with using Corel's Video Studio Pro X2. In today's short lesson, I'm going to show you how to add video effects to your movie. Video Studio Pro X2 comes with about 55 or so video filters. These can be added to your movie for a variety of reasons, such as color editing for levels, brightness, exposure and balance, hue and saturation. You can try old film effects like sepia tones, scratches, and film damage. You can reduce artifacts by using the de-block, de-snow, or de-noise filters. Lighting features include lens flares and spotlights. Choose shape effects like pinch and punch and kaleidoscope, emboss, mirror and ripple. There's also weather effects like rain, clouds, wind, and lightning. The other great feature of the video filters in Video Studio Pro X2 are the fact that you can animate changes to these effects over time by adding keyframes. Video Studio Pro X2 will automatically animate the changes between the settings you create in a process called tweening. With the ease of use of Video Studio Pro X2 and its video filters, you can make your movies look like they took hours and required a thousand dollar or more software application to create. Let's get started. I've quickly produced the basics of my movie as usual using the movie wizard, then move my production to this Video Studio editor, which is where I am now. Let's start by playing with this video clip of the pickup truck. From the video drop-down, I'll select Video Filters, All. Here you can see the thumbnails of the filters I just mentioned along with a bunch of animated previews. Now I want to lighten up this clip a little bit, so I'm going to find the Auto Exposure filter and simply drag and drop the filter right to the timeline on top of the clip. And that's much better. If I click the eye icon here, I can see the before and after of applying this effect. Let's now take advantage of the setting sun by adding an animated lens flare. Yes, you can actually add multiple effects onto any clip. Now, you notice that when I added the previous effect, and as is per usual in Video Studio, editing features automatically appear so I can see which filters have been applied and make those adjustments. I'll now drag and drop the lens filter onto the same clip on the timeline. Another feature I want to show you is that many of these filters also come with convenient presets in the drop-down located here. Since I want to simulate the sun going down, I will choose the first one. Now I'll hit the Customize Filter icon. Now I will leave the plus mark where it is. This will designate the center of the lens flare. Now remember when I spoke about keyframes and making changes that can be animated over time? Well, that's exactly what will happen here. Notice if I go to the last keyframe, the preset I chose already has settings in it. Because of the keyframe feature, these settings will animate from one to the other. If I did not want this to happen, but wanted the lens flare to remain the same throughout, I would simply right click on the first keyframe and choose copy and paste to all. But I don't want to do that. But I will go to the last keyframe and make the flare even smaller than it already is and you'll see the change immediately. If I so desired, I could also add a keyframe anywhere along my point by moving the playback head and hitting the Add Keyframe icon. I can also just move any of the keyframes I want to just by moving them along the timeline. And I can also swap keyframes with this icon and reverse the direction of the entire video effect. But I'll click OK for now. And let's play this back. Pretty good. Okay, let's see what other trouble I can get into, shall we? Let me go to our next clip. Let's add some weather to this clip. Gee, a rainstorm seems to have added by adding the rain filter. Now it defaults to a light rain, but let's make it a downpour, shall we? Now, and because of the heavy rain, the camera lens just might be getting fogged up. So let's add the zoom filter. And let's play this back. Nice. And oh, what the heck, let's add lightning too. I'm going to customize the lightning filter. So I'll double click on customize filter. And let's reduce the glow. Let's reduce the frequency a little bit. Ambient lighting, we'll reduce that to about 70. Again, these are just come from experimentation. Any of your settings can be changed any way you want to. I will select random lighting, duration of each one, make it about three seconds of each lightning bolt, 
and the interval is reduced to about every two seconds. And let's click OK. Oh, and let's also not have the lightning hitting directly on the balloon. Let's make it off to the side over here and click OK. Now let's rewind this clip and play it back. Great, kind of fun. Now if you want to, you could really go over the top and add the old film filter on top of that and try that. That is really over the top. All right, but let's do this. What you can also do is you can actually affect how the filter looks depending on the order of them in this clip here. So if I bring the rain to the front, notice how it becomes more prominent, like so. So those are your additional choices that you have there. Gee, I hope everybody brought an umbrella. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks again, and I'll see you in a future lesson.